In this video, I'm teaching you how I store, protect, and organize my comic books. What's up guys, BJ Kicks here. I buy comics, I read them, and I review them. All for your viewing pleasure. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. And now this is another episode of Comics 101 where I teach you, just in case you're new to comics, all the things I wish I knew two years ago when I was just starting out. So today I'm talking about comic book storage, protection, and organization. Now, I probably don't have to state the importance of a well-protected and a well-organized collection, but I will just because, right? So when I was new to comics, like I said, about two years ago, um, I just was not prepared for what the hobby would later become for me because I stumbled into comics. I wasn't someone who grew up reading comics. I just happened to walk into a comic shop with my daughter and kind of fell in love with the concept. So I didn't know what a pull list was. I didn't know anything. I was a young whippersnapper <laughs> and I kind of slowly learned the ropes, like literally step by step by step by having awkward conversations with clerks and other people in the store. Um, and now, you know, kind of all the, the wealth of knowledge I have now, I'm imparting to you in these videos. So my point is I made a lot of mistakes and now I'm gonna tell you what to avoid so you don't have to make the same mistakes I did. When I moved about a year and a half ago, I had one short box and that one short box held all of my single issues, my graphic novels, and a couple of toys that I had. All of that fit in one short box. And that's crazy. I now have several of them. We'll talk about those in just a minute. So storing your comic books is super important for several reasons. One, you don't want them to get messed up, right? Like I've got a baby now. I've got, you know, small children running around. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, comic books are just bundles of paper. They're super, super fragile. Um, and you never know which comic might end up being worth something one day. You might get a first appearance. They're popping them out every other day, it seems like. And so you want to make sure your books are protected so that you get the ultimate value out of your collection. God forbid you have to sell something one day. You would hate for it to be like super low grade when it could have been much higher if you just taken care of your books. And then, of course, as your collection grows, it's going to be super, super, important to keep it organized that way you're not buying duplicates and you're able to like manage your collection and read it when you want to and not read it when you don't so i'm going to give you a few tips a few tricks and i'm going to show you some tools that i use to keep my collection well protected and organized so without further ado let's get into it so what i have right here this is actually uh the last week of comic book releases so if you watched the what I'm getting video last week, then you already know what is in this stack. There might even be a few books in the stack that I said weren't going to be, but we can talk about those later. Uh, but anyway, so when I come from my LCS, uh, my local comic shop, I tend to have a fat stack like this. Now, um, the first thing I'm going to do, sometimes I do this in the store, sometimes I do it at home. Uh, this particular situation, I did it in the store. But I'll go ahead and separate my books by publisher, or just sort them, I should say. So, when I get home, I can make a nice to-read pile. So, right here, these are all the indie books that I picked up last week. And then, these are the DC books I picked up last week. And finally, here's my Marvel pile from last week. So, those are all the books. And... Normally, what I would do is I'd read those books and then I'd bag and board them. Well, that's if I'm already caught up on my to read pile. Unfortunately, I'm not. So let me tell you a little bit about the system that I've set up and maybe it'll resonate with you. Maybe it'll work for you and maybe it won't. But this is just an idea. So the first thing you're going to need to, uh, you know, implement what I guess we can call the kick system, although I didn't proprietate. Yeah, proprietate is not a word. I didn't come up, I'm not the proprietor of this method, but we gotta give it a name, so why not my name? Anyway, that's a very Christopher Columbus thing to say. Uh, so first thing you're gonna need, if you're gonna organize your books the way I organize my books, um, are a couple of tools. Uh, the most prominent 
are going to be what we call bags and boards. So these are comic book storage bags. Um, the brand that I like to use is BCW, but they're having a nationwide shortage right now. A lot of shops can't get BCW supplies in. Everything's on back order. The resealable bags that I like to use, they're not going to be back in stock at BCW until December. Who's got time to wait for that? So I've actually got links to the bags that I'm using right now. These are Ultra Pro bags. Um, you'll see them in the Amazon shop in the description below. Uh, but anyway, you're going to need bags and comic book backing boards. These are just like kind of thick pieces of cardstock. They go behind your comic book in the bag uh, so that it keeps your, board, your book straight and, you know, protected. So... In any normal situation, I actually like, I keep my bags and boards in a drawer under my desk. I, I showed it to you guys in my room tour. Um, but just in case you're unaware of how to bag and board your comic book, uh, comic book backing boards, they actually come with a smooth side and a sort of rough side. The rough side, you do not want touching your book. Put your book on the smooth side. So you go ahead and put it, your book right here, just like so. Grab your comic book bag, open it up, and gently slide it in, um, and boom, there you go. My book is now bagged and boarded. It just feels a little bit sturdier. It's well protected. Um, it's great. Now, I like to use resealable comic book bags. So, resealable bags come with like this little strip right here. It's self-adhesive, and boom, you just close it up. And you can open it up and still, it's not like permanent, but there you go, it's closed. Um, I like this method because if you don't use a resealable bag, then you gotta worry about scotch tape and who has time to like rip off individual pieces of anyway. So book is now bagged and boarded and it's ready for the next step, which is for it to be stored somewhere. Now there are several methods of storing comic books. Some people just put them in a bookshelf. Some people put them in drawers. Some people have cabinets made. I don't have that luxury. So what do I use? A good old fashioned short box. So this is a short box. A short box is not to be confused with a long box, but a short box, your typical short box, holds between 100 and 150 comics, just depending on what era, whether or not the books are super thick and heavy, and so on. But here's a short box, and it's gonna hold, like I said, about 150 comics. Um, a long box is double this length. So I don't know if you guys can really tell how big this is. There we go. So this is like, I don't know, three, four times the width of my head. Um, so this is a short box. A long box, it's like I said, it's going to be double this length uh, or width. The face of it is going to be twice as big. How about that? <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's a short box. And that's my preferred storage method. Now, some people do prefer long boxes, especially if you have a bigger collection. I certainly understand why. For me, short boxes are a lot more manageable. And what's great is the short boxes, they come in like plain white options from BCW and you'll see those um, at any shop in the USA. You'll also see them like on Amazon and stuff. I prefer art boxes. Um, and we'll talk about my organization method later, but having art boxes, boxes with uh, pictures on them, uh, helps me to remember what's in the boxes a lot easier than looking at a wall of white boxes and then having to kind of focus in and read what's on each box. So let's pretend I went ahead and read all of my books this week. I go ahead and I bag and board them all. Well, now it's time to put them away. So the last piece of supply that I need is this. This is a BCW comic book divider. So these, this is something I did not have before. Um, now, I told you I was going to talk to you guys about my system for short boxes. Well, there's a few ways that you can do it. You can have short boxes based on publisher. You can have short boxes based on characters. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can divide it up. I've tried several ways. Uh, when I first started out, I had one short box and it held all my comic books. As my collection grew, I had two short boxes. I had a Justice League box and I had an X-Men box. My Justice League was for DC Comics. My X-Men box 
was for Marvel Comics. And then the collection grew even more. And then my Justice League box was for Batman comics. I had a Superman box for the rest of my DC comics. My X-Men box was just for X-Men comics. And I bought a Spider-Man box for the rest of my Marvel comics. So as you can see, you know, there's plenty of systems. There's plenty of different ways that you can differentiate books. And it's really a personal thing. It's just whatever is going to help you remember where things are. But currently... I have boxes based on publisher and character. So Batman is my favorite on the DC side. X-Men are my favorite on the Marvel side. And I have way more Batman and X-Men than I do anything else. So they have their own dedicated boxes. What I try to do is when I go to the shop um, and pick up a new art box, I try to make sure the art box at least matches the publisher um, for the books that I know need are going to need to go in it. Uh, so um, right now I've got a pretty healthy mixture of DC and Marvel boxes. I do have a couple of indie boxes as well. And that's, again, why I love art boxes, because having a nice art printed box gives you a nice visual representation of what's inside. But maybe you don't have art boxes, right? Art boxes are typically only found on the direct market, meaning in an actual comic shop. And a lot of comic shops don't ship out these art boxes because they're irregularly sized. They'd be more expensive than it's worth. So if you're looking for art boxes, I think the best place to go, if you don't have a local comic shop, is going to be bcwsupplies.com. I don't know if that's how, what their website's called, but I'll leave it linked in the description below. Um, and I'll also leave a link to some in my Amazon storefront that you can check out in the description as well. So that's pretty much it. Now, one thing I mentioned was, you know, when I read my books, that's when I file them away. But what if I didn't read my books, right? Well, what you've got right here, what you can see, I don't know if you can see this. This would be my normal to read pile if... You know, it was a normal week and I was already caught up before I came home from the comic shop. Sometimes that's not the case. And so, so right here on this desk would normally be my to read pile if I was actually caught up on books week in and week out. Unfortunately, I just haven't been lately. And so what I actually have under my desk are three short boxes, one Marvel, one DC and one blank. And that is is my to read short box. Now, how do I separate and differentiate between what I've read, what I haven't? Well, I put them all in alphabetical order by a character or by series title. And if I haven't read the book, I don't close the bag and board. If I have read the book, then I close it. And eventually, like at the end of every week, I'll go in and I'll actually file them in my wall of short boxes based on the series title and publisher. So, um, the biggest pieces of advice I can give you, right? One, make sure you bag and board every single book. It's just, you never know. Again, you never know what you might do that's going to damage a book. And you would hate for that first appearance to be announced or you'd hate for like a movie to be announced or something crazy. And then to come to find out you had this book, but it's in terrible condition because you didn't take care of it from the beginning. Um, like I said, you might be like me. You might have small kids or a baby running around. My daughter, my my newest daughter, my baby girl, literally uh, spit up like projectile puked onto a short box a few weeks ago. Thankfully, every book inside was bagged and boarded. I went through with a washcloth and made sure there was nothing on any of the bags. Thankfully, it wasn't because the books were in the box. If I had them just sitting on the floor or something, maybe it would have been a different story. So that's one piece of advice. Bag and board everything. Box up everything. You shouldn't have stacks of books all over your house. Don't be like I was. Next thing is use these dividers. Literally, I know they can be expensive. They come in like a 25 pack. I'll leave a link to them in the description, but use these dividers. I have dividers for every single series title or at the very least every character. So, you know, I've got a Superman divider and maybe in that Superman tab, you know, there's Superman miniseries, right? Like uh, I'm not going to have a tab for Superman and Superman and the Authority. 
is going to put them on both, right? And so think about that. Like, but when it's time for you to organize your books, you want to try to keep them organized or organize them as often as possible and as soon as possible because you don't want to be in a situation where you lose books or you buy doubles when you didn't have to, um, especially in today's game. If you're going for back issues and stuff like that, um, they can get expensive, right? So use different tools, right? I use the CLZ app. I actually left, I did a review of it, so I'll leave that in the YouTube card so you can see it. Uh, but between organizing your books physically and then having a record of them on an app or on some sort of cloud-based system, it's going to help you keep up with what you have so you're not buying things that you don't need. And also helps you understand, you know, exactly how much money you're spending, right? Uh, Listen, if books get piled up around here for too long, if I'm looking and my to read pile is three full short boxes, that means I need to cut down on things. But if I'm unorganized, if I'm just stuffing books here, there and everywhere, I may never know that. So it's super important to organize your collection. I hope giving you some insight into my system helped at least a little. And um, if it did, let me know in the comments below. If you got a different system, let me know if you think this is helpful. I want to know. So let me know in the comments below. And if you decide that you want to talk comics with me all the time, you should join my Facebook group. It's called The K-Squad. Links are in the description and while you're there. You can check out our channel sponsors. Um, and like I said, visit my Amazon shop for inexpensive comic recommendations, not just supplies, but trade paperbacks, quick stories for someone who's new to comics. I've got all my personal recommendations in there. So hope you saw something you liked in this video. If not, hey, that's cool. You can always buy what you like. Just make sure you read what you buy. And be nice to others, because kindness makes the world go round. I'll see you in another one very soon. Until then, peace.